Hello, this is Danielle Jawowiecka with the BBC News. German media are reporting that the Chancellor Olaf Scholz has decided to send 14 modern battle tanks to Ukraine after weeks of pressure from Kiev and its allies. Katja Adler explains why the decision by Germany is crucial. The real significance here isn't just about Germany. About 80% of modern tanks in Europe are those German-made Leopard 2s, and they own all of the export rights. So this means countries like Poland, desperate to send their tanks to Ukraine, haven't been able to do so yet because they haven't had the nod from Berlin. But it's worth bearing in mind in all of this controversy that Germany already is one of the biggest suppliers of military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine in this crisis, as one might expect from Europe's largest economy. The United States says it's suing Google, accusing the tech giant of harming competition with its dominance of the online advertising market. The lawsuit was launched by the Justice Department and eight U.S. states. Prosecutors accuse Google of using unlawful and anti-competitive means to weaken any threat to its control. Vanita Gupta is the U.S. Associate Attorney General. At its core, antitrust is about economic justice. And today's landmark action against Google underscores that it is a priority of this Justice Department to fight the abuse of market power. We know that free and fair competition is essential to economic freedom. And we know that anti-competitive conduct threatens innovation, weakens workers' rights and stifles free expression. Google has denied it is a monopoly. Jacinda Ardern has officially stepped down as Prime Minister of New Zealand. Her successor, Chris Hipkins, was sworn in by the country's Governor-General in the capital, Wellington. His new Deputy Prime Minister is Carmel Sepuloni, the first Indigenous Pacific Islander to hold the position. Mr Hipkins said he was honoured to take up his new role. This is the biggest privilege and responsibility of my life. I'm energised and excited by the challenges that lie ahead. The Deputy Prime Minister and I both take today's appointments very seriously. As Prime Minister, I acknowledge the important nature of my role in advising the Sovereign and the Governor-General. I express my personal thanks to you and look forward to working with you. The President of Peru has called for a national truce as thousands of protesters remain on the streets calling for her to step down. Dina Boluarte said there needed to be dialogue, peace and unity. She said weeks of demonstrations had cost the country more than a billion dollars in damage to infrastructure and lost production. Around 50 people have been killed in clashes involving protesters and the Peruvian security forces since the former president, Pedro Castillo, was arrested and impeached in December for alleged corruption. You're listening to the World News from the BBC. The United States has proposed that more targets responsible for lawlessness in Haiti should be nominated for United Nations sanctions. The strategy, which is supported by China and Russia, comes as Haiti battles severe food shortages and a cholera epidemic amidst the unrest. The UN Special Envoy to Haiti said gang-related violence had reached levels not seen in decades. The Haitian government and the UN Secretary General have said there is an urgent need to create an international force to restore order in Haiti. Rwanda says it's taken what it calls defensive measures against a fighter aircraft from the Democratic Republic of Congo after the jet violated its airspace. A government statement said it was the third time such an incursion had taken place. A BBC correspondent says the incident marks a sharp escalation of tensions between the two neighbouring countries. A lawyer representing a man accused of killing 23 people at a store in the U.S. says he will plead guilty to federal hate crimes charges. Patrick Crucius is accused of carrying out a massacre at a car park outside a Walmart store in El Paso, Texas in 2019. Scientists in Scotland's University of St Andrews say a new study of chimpanzees has provided evidence that human communication may have evolved from hand and body gestures still practised by our evolutionary ancestors. Victoria Gill reports. Gently dabbing the mouth of a companion is bonobo for give me some food. And a big demonstrative scratch is how chimpanzees say groom me please. There are now dozens of known gestures in the great ape lexicon, each with a particular meaning. Many of the same gestures are known to be shared among chimpanzees, bonobos, orangutans and gorillas. So the fact that humans also have a natural understanding of some of these signals suggests that gesturing was a form of communication that was used by our shared ape ancestors more than six million years ago. BBC News.